excited to tell you about these paints made out of soil. So a couple weeks ago, I was scrolling on the internet and I saw this article by the Smithsonian. And it was about the soil scientists that found a way to make paint out of soil. And it caught my eye right away because I really like the idea of connecting science with creativity and art. So I have these paints and I decided I wanted to do something a little creative and fun for this video. So I'm going to talk about a little bit about the basics and about the paints and how they're made and then I'm going to paint some soil art. <laughs> so on the website for the art of soil their about me page they say we celebrate soils in all their forms and aim to increase our collective connection to soils to aid in the conservation and care as practicing professional soil scientists and educators we see a clear need for greater soils literacy in public spaces we also know that long-term soil conservation requires that we see soils as more than just a medium for plant growth from which we can extract resources but rather as a living interconnected natural wonder that deserves to be celebrated our Efforts here centers such soil celebrations. I really like that, soil celebrations. So on Karen and Yamina's website, there's so many amazing resources. And one of those resources that I really love that I plan on looking at more is the Soil Explorer, which is an interactive map that you can look at to figure out what the soils are all over the world. Very similar to the Rocked app that I was talking about for bedrock geology in my last video. Another thing I love about this is the Instagram pages that Karen and Yamina have. The one for the paint itself is called The Art of Soil, and I think Karen runs that one where she posts mainly about the process of making the paints, the different so the different collections of the soil pigments, where she gets them, um, a lot of the stuff about like the creativity. I think they do lives where they do like, you can go on and paint with them virtually, kind of like a live Bob Ross situation. And then another Instagram page to check out is For the Love of Soil, which is more of the educational side of things. I'm telling you, if you think soil is boring, if you think it's just dirt, I think you will be proven wrong if you go and look at these pages. When I think of dirt, I think of something that I want to get rid of, you know, like that's dirty, um, you have dirt on your face, you have dirt on your hands, you need to wash your hands. Dirt kind of has a bad connotation to it. You don't think of it as something that's complex and alive, but when you say soil, it has a whole other meaning and that's why soil scientists, I don't think they really like to use the term dirt. Soil is, is very complex and it's full of life and it's full of its own chemical reactions and biological reactions. It has minerals and animals and other organisms, microbes, it has all this stuff going on so it'd be kind of crazy to just call it dirt all the time. So this is a really beautiful color, this is like a sage green. Ooh, I really like that color. I wish I could tell you more about what exactly makes them these colors, but I feel like I would be wrong about a lot of it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna leave that to the soil scientists and let you go on their page and you can figure that out yourself. That sounded kind of rude. This one is like a rusty red. I'm really excited about this one. I love these kind of colors. I feel like any artist is probably in pain watching me right now. Ooh, wow, I really like that one. This is a nice red soil. I could probably tell you why this is red though. A lot of the time when you see a red rock or red soil, it's because of weathering processes, a chemical weathering process like redox, reduction oxi oxidation. Usually that means that there is iron in the rock or the soil and when it reacts with the air, it creates this red color. And it's beautiful when it's made into paint. And following along on their Instagram is a great idea because you can see the process of making, you can see the process of how they make the paints. I think Karen posts a lot of really cool videos where she shows when she gets the soils, what she does with them. And it's really fun because you can watch the process of a new soil pigment collection and then you can buy that same collection. So how does something like this come from soil? You can't just go outside, pick up a 
chunk of soil and bring it and smear it on paper. You can, but it's probably gonna be a little more messy and it'll be more grainy depending on the type of soil. So the first step of making these paints is actually, well, obviously collecting the soil. They go out and they find a soil that looks like it'll be an interesting color and they, oh, let's try this color. Okay, so they go out and they collect the soil and they put it in water. So one of the tests that I actually used when I was in the field for my last job, when I was doing soil descriptions and soil logging, just if I needed to kind of guess how much there was of a certain grain size from like a coarser to finer perspective, I would a lot of the time use my hands and just kind of feel it and figure out what the grain size was. But sometimes it was too difficult. So I would do what we called a jar test where I would put a small sample of that soil in a jar with water and shake it up. And then I would set it down and let it and let the soil settle to the bottom in the water. So as you know, you probably know that smaller particles will sometimes be uh, mixed into the solution of something like when you make chocolate milk for example those are really small powdery particles and when you mix it into the milk into the liquid it dissolves because it's so small and it just kind of dissolves into the solution if you were to put sand or gravel in there it would just kind of sink to the bottom right away because it's heavier once that's done settling they take the smaller particles from the top of that uh, mixture the settled mixture and they put it into a tray and let that dry out. And then once it's dried out, they crush it into a powder, mix it with watercolor medium, and then turn it into this paint. And then they put them in these little containers. So as you can see, color is one of the main characteristics that I have to record. And it's actually the first thing you write down. The reason that these paints work so well and that they spread out so well in that water is because the particles are silt sized or clay sized particles. And that is 0 0.002 millimeters or smaller. So just for comparison, I'm gonna show you what that looks like. This is my field guide and they actually have a little sample here of the different particle sizes. See, that's coarse sand, then we have medium sand, fine sand, and then all the way down here is silt and clay. This is the size that they want to get out of those soil samples to make the paint. They even have a tutorial on their website for how you can make the paint yourself. Some of the things they've made pigments out of are sun, uh, what are they called? Sun, do sun dollars? Is that what they're called? Sand dollars. <laughs> so they crushed up the sand dollars and made a powder out of them and then went through the, with the rest of the process like I was talking about. I also saw that they've made soil pigments out of ash from fires, from wildfires in Wyoming in last year. They collected some ash from when those fires were happening and used those in one of their soil collections. This print is of a few different soil profiles. And a soil profile is essentially the different soil horizons in that location. And what soil horizons are, are the layers of the soil as you go deeper into the ground. I actually found a lot of the time when I was at my last job when we were drilling into the soil, I was able to tell when we were about to reach the bedrock layer because I saw broken down minerals like micas and stuff in the layer of soil that was right above the bedrock. There's a lot of factors that go into what the soil is like. The geology of the area, the climate, the organisms that live in that area, that live in the soil, um, like the roots of trees and plants and fungi. And so it, it creates all these really fun, interesting looking cross sections to look at and paint. So I'm going to try my best at painting a soil profile and then I'm going to explain to you the different parts of it, the different horizons. So as I paint that, I'm gonna chat a little bit more about soil. I've had experience with my undergraduate research with soils and I've worked with soils in the field many times. I've also gone to Wyoming for um, a month to do field work to finish my geology degree. We had to do a lot of geologic mapping where we went and hiked around these really large distances in Wyoming, sometimes in the desert, sometimes in the forest. And we would, a lot of the times, use the soil, the appearance of the soil, mostly the color or the texture, to figure out what the rock formation was. One of the places we went to, we were mostly looking at soils to figure out what the bedrock was because you're not always gonna find a perfect outcrop of the rock you're looking for and you have to rely on the soil. And I noticed when I was hiking around these places 
I was starting to realize that certain plants grew in certain rock formation areas. As soon as I crossed over from one rock formation to another, and as soon as that soil color changed, I would see these certain plants pop up. Like there were these plants that were like little succulents that I always wanted to pick up and take home with me. And they would only show up in like this one specific rock formation. And I always wondered if that was because of maybe the minerals in that rock that was able to create the right soil for that plant to grow. I'm a geologist and I love rocks, but you quickly learn when you when you study science, when you study an earth science or a natural science, they're all pretty interconnected. And that's just one of the ways that I noticed it in my field studies. Soil is very similar to studying rocks in a way. I always like to say that rocks are very useful in figuring out a story from the past. And soils are the same, but soils can tell us a lot about the present as well because they absorb a lot of the stuff that's going on at the... <laughs> Getting a little too excited about soil here. Soil absorbs a lot of the stuff going on at the surface, so it absorbs carbon dioxide and a lot of other stuff. It kind of just records that as a kind of like a book and we can go and look at it and study it and we can look at the minerals in it and the organisms that are living in it and the way that it reacts with water and figure out what the environment is or what the environment was like when that soil was formed. We can figure out what the rocks are like beneath it. Lots of other stuff. Soil is very important also to food production. It's very important with wine and beer. For example, there are tons of species of hops that grow all over the world. And this is because of the different environments that they can grow in and the different soils that they grow in best. So my dad and stepmom actually grow hops and I've spent a good amount of time taking care of hops. And I've learned that certain hop plants that we try to grow don't really thrive as much as other ones that were that are maybe more used to that soil and that environment that we're in, the climate and all of that. So next time you drink a beer or next time you have a nice glass of wine, thank the soils for that wine you're drinking, that beer that you're drinking. Not only does it matter for the hops, but also the grain. The grains that grow, the barley, the wheat, any other grains that are in your beer are dependent on the soil. They're dependent on the health of that soil and the complexity of the soil. It's all because of dirt, not dirt, soil. <laughs> I have finished my soil profile. This is my profile picture. <laughs> okay, so I have this soil profile drawn. Essentially what a soil profile is, is it's a mix of different soil horizons. And there are different kinds of soil profiles as shown here and you can see the different horizons within these profiles in this one i drew all of the different possible soil horizons but all a soil profile needs is just a b and c the main soil horizons the first one on the top here is the o horizon and this one usually has a lot of organic debris and humus not the snack hummus but humus which is like decomposed leaves or plants other kinds of organic matter and then below that is the a horizon and the a horizon is the topsoil so the, below the topsoil a i have an e layer an e horizon which stands for alluviated and usually this would be leached of clay minerals organic matter leaving a concentration of sand and silt particles of quartz or other resistant materials missing in some soils but also but often found in older soils and forest soils. And then below the E horizon would be the B horizon. In some cases, it would just be A, B. The B horizon is the subsoil. And usually this is rich in minerals that leach down from the layers above it. So I tried drawing with the watercolor and that's why I think watercolor is so great for soil science. I think they did that on purpose because you can show the different stuff from the other layers leaching down into the lower layers. And then below the subsoil we have the sea horizon and this 
Horizon is the parent material from which all this other stuff derived from. And then lastly, we have the R Horizon, which technically isn't a soil horizon, but it's made out of bedrock. And in this case, I drew some fractures in the bedrock. So this is a pretty complicated and mature soil profile, but keep in mind that it can be a lot more simple than this. This is just an example of how different they can all be. I'm gonna take it out of here. See, we have this signature. So Karen's a little bit better at drawing these than me. <laughs> she definitely has a little more practice. So if you took a look at all these different soil profiles, you can see all, like all of them are present in some of them and some of them are more simple. Like that's bedrock, I think. And then we have like just one layer, just one horizon above it. See, this one's a more irony one. Oh, I really like the leaching and stuff going on in this one. And I think that's all, also some fractures in the bedrock down here. I went ahead and tried painting another one. It's not that much of an improvement, but I'm having fun. So I think I'm gonna go paint a little bit more and just play around with these fun new paints that I got. So thank you for watching and thanks for coming to learn about soil and connecting science with creativity.